Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question starts out that Cancun Guest House Limited rents comfortable rooms and serves breakfast to its guests. The company was started through the issue of the following. So they give us some more information down here regarding the issue of $100,001 ordinary shares at $1 each, 5,000 10% preference shares at $2 each, and 200 6% debentures at $200 each. Okay. The following information was provided for the year ended November 30th, 2009. All right. So they give us this nice table here. What do we have in this table? We have net profit for the year, 83,520. Stock of breakfast supplies, 5,000. Then we have stock of sheets, towels, etc. at cost purchased December 1st, 2008. Now that's the start of the year because the end the information here is at November 30th, 2009. So December 1st, 08 is exactly one year before. So that's, that stock is 22,000, all right. Then we have accounts payable, 13,430. We have property and tools at cost, 365,000. We have depreciation on the property and tools, etc. At the start of the year, 109,500. We also have petty cash, 1,200. We have a bank account, 20,480. We also have general reserve, 8,000 as the balance currently in it, and retained earnings at the start of the year, 13,813. Now we have some additional information. We have four items. What are they? Firstly, depreciation on property and tools for the year is 22,000. Okay. Then we have the stock of sheets, towels, and similar items are depreciated over two years before they are replaced. Whoa. So we purchased them on December the 1st, 08, the start of the current year. And we and we plan to keep them for two years and they're being depreciated over two years after which they'll be replaced. Okay, so basically what we have to do is just divide the 22 by 2 to get 11,000. But I'll talk more about that when we have to deal with it. Next, we have debenture interest remains outstanding. And then they're saying that the directors have recommended the following transfer 15,000 to the general reserve, full dividend on all preference shares, 50% dividend on all ordinary shares. Okay. The first thing they want is prepare the appropriation account of the company for the year ended November 30th, 09. Show all working seven marks. Okay. So of course, please always remember to head up your statements properly. Name of the entity, name of the statement and the period to which it applies. So Cancun Guest House Limited appropriation account for the year ended 30th November 2009. The first item to go in it will be the net profit for the year of 83,520. So we're going to plug that in. Now we're going to subtract or less the appropriation. The first thing we're going to start with is dividends. Now in the additional information they said that we're going to pay the full dividend on preference shares and 50% dividend on ordinary shares. So if we go up to the information regarding the shares, if we have 5,000 10% preference shares at $2 each. So to find the full dividend, we have to multiply 10%, which is the dividend rate, by the total par value of the shares. How do we find that? We multiply the number of shares by the par value per share. So our calculation here would simply be, um, sorry, 10% of 5,000 by 2. And that's going to give us $1,000 for the preference dividend. Now for the ordinary dividend, they're telling us that we are doing 50% dividend on ordinary shares. So we are going to go up to the ordinary share information. We have $100,001 ordinary shares at a dollar each. So $100,000 by one is $100,000 worth of ordinary shares. And we're going to find 50% of that, which will simply be 50,000. So we'll see a little work in here, 50% of 100,000 by $1. So one and 50 will give us 51. Now. They did also tell us that we want to do a transfer to the general reserve of $15,000. So we're going to put that in here as well. Adding 51 to 15 gives us 66. Taking 66 from the 83,520 gives us 17,520, which is the retained earnings for the year, to which we have to add the retained earnings from the previous year brought forward of 13,830. 
right? That's going to give us, of course, the retained earnings figure carried forward to the next year of 31,350. Now, I used to add this retained earnings figure at the start, and honestly, arithmetically, it makes no difference where you put it. I just sort of now prefer to show that you can use the current year's profit to make the required appropriations and still have profit left over. But of course, retained earnings are there for a reason. If your current year's profit is not sufficient to make your, uh, your appropriations, the required appropriations, you can draw from the previous year's retained earnings. Okay, so it's up to you which way you want to present it. I am preferring this method now. Okay, let's take a look at part B. All right, so part B is telling us to prepare a classified balance sheet as at November 30th, 2009 for Cancun Guest House Limited. So please remember to head up your statements properly, right? Cancun Guest House, name of the entity, name of the statement, statement of financial position as at the 30th November 09. Now, they didn't tell us what format to use, but again, as you should know, there are multiple ways to present a statement of financial position. There's the order of permanence, the order of liquidity, I prefer the order of permanence, which starts with the longest lasting assets first, the non-current assets first, then goes to current assets. Now, you can do what I like, assets on top, sorry, assets minus liabilities on top and then capital below. Or you can do assets on top minus, sorry, equal to capital plus liabilities below. I'm going to show you both ways and I'm going to start with the assets minus capital, sorry, assets minus liabilities in that asset approach. All right, so permanence means long lasting and we're going to start with the non-current assets first. So we're going to list those here, non-current assets, dollar signs. Okay, so up in the information, we have property and tools at cost, 365. We also have those, the stock of sheets, right, 22,000. And we also have the provision for depreciation on the property and tools. Now, don't forget down here, we have some other information about depreciation and property for the current year. So what's going to happen is we're going to have to add this 22,000 figure to the figure above of 109.5, right? So this 109.5 is the depreciation from all the previous years. Now the balance sheet is as at the 30th November 09, which will include the current year's depreciation of 22,000. So you're gonna see that here, right? So you're gonna see the property and tools at cost, the 365, which is the cost, the 131.5 is the 109.5, which is the, the depreciation brought forward, plus the 22,000, which is the depreciation given to us in the additional information, which is the depreciation expense for the current year. Now, for the was it a stock, stock of sheets and towels, etc. right? So the cost was 22,000, bought December 1st, 08, at the start of the year. And don't forget, this note down here says that the stock of sheets, towels, and similar items are to be depreciated over two years before they are replaced. So all we're gonna do is divide them by two. We're spreading the cost of 22,000 evenly over two years. So 22 divided by 2 will give us 11,000. And we're going to subtract that from the 11 to get 11 here. Now, when we add going down in each column, 365 and 22, total value, total cost of assets, non-current assets, total accumulated depreciation to date, and then total net book value. The next set of stuff we're going to look at is the current assets. So for current assets, we are going to look at the stock of breakfast supplies. We're also going to look at petty cash and bank. So let's populate, let's put those items in across here, right? So stock of breakfast supplies, bank and petty cash giving us current assets of 26,680, which will add to the total net book value of non-current assets to get total assets. Now we'll deal with any non-current liabilities and we do have the debentures. The debentures, we have 200 issued and the value is $200 each. So 200 by 200 is 40,000. So 6% debentures, 40,000. Now honestly, you could just, you don't have to have this, you could just have that in this column here. But I kind of like to show a kind of, what's the word, consistency in the presentation. And I'll show you what I mean, right? So for the current liabilities, we are going to see a few things. So now we have accounts payable of 13,430. And I also included the dividends here as well, right? The reason is because we declared the dividends. They didn't say that we paid them, right? The, the directors have recommended the following, the full dividend, 50%, etc. But it didn't say we paid it yet. So that's how they used to catch a lot of people, right? So you're going to see the accounts payable, the debenture, oh, sorry, the debenture interest. Now they did tell us that in note three, always read your notes. Note three, debenture interest remains outstanding, right? So there was 6% debentures, 40,000 was the value and 6% of 40,000 is 2,400, right? So after that, I have the preference dividends owing and the ordinary dividend owing as well, giving us total current liabilities of 66,830. 
Now we're going to add that to the non-current liabilities to get total liabilities, which we will subtract from the total assets just above there to give us net assets of 164350 right? Now the assets are the resources of the business, the things the business uses to engage in business to earn revenue and ultimately profit. Where do those resources come from? Do they come for free? No, the business has to buy them. Where does the money come from for the business to buy them? Well, you have two sources, the owner via capital or equity capital and entities other than the owner, lenders, creditors via liabilities or debt capital. Now we've already dealt with the liabilities. So what remains is whatever was financed by the owners or financed by the share capital and reserves. So we're going to start with the share capital. Now don't forget, back up here, we have 100,000 ordinary shares at a dollar each and 5,000 preference shares at $2 each. That's going to give us 100,000 for the ordinary shares, 10,000 for the preference shares, totaling 110,000 for the total share capital. The reserves, now we had two sets of reserves. The general reserve had an opening balance of $8,000 and we were also told that we had a transfer this year of $15,000. So you had to add the 8 and the 15 to get 23. Don't forget, at the end of the appropriation account that we did previously, we had a retained earnings figure carried forward of 31350 So we'll add those two figures together to get 54350 which we will then add to the share capital and reserves to get total share capital and reserves of 164350 which of course matches with the net asset figure and your balance sheet balances, right? Assets minus liabilities on top is equal to capital below, right? So as promised, that's the first version I'm gonna show you, which was in order of permanence, the net assets in order of permanence. And I'm also now gonna show you assets equal to capital plus liabilities. So just give me one sec, let me rearrange some stuff and we'll pick up from there. Okay, so I'm showing the balance sheet that we just did on the left-hand side just to give you a comparison to what we're doing now. So we're not gonna go through all the information again and then repopulate it. I'm just going to populate it as I go down here pretty quickly. It's almost like copying and pasting the exact same information. But the difference that's happening now is that the top half of the balance sheet stops here at total assets. So you have your non-current assets on top followed by your current assets and you're adding them together to get total assets, right? And again, still in order of permanence, longer lasting assets first. Now we're gonna be showing the capital and liabilities section. So we're gonna start with the share capital because capital is more permanent than liabilities. The owner's investments are usually there for longer than any loans, right? So you have your share capital first and of course, the reserves will be put in next to give us total capital and reserves of 164,350. Then we're gonna to go to the non-current liabilities, the debentures. Then the current liabilities, the accounts payable, and then the other things payable as well, totaling 66,830. Now that's going to give us total liabilities of 106,830, which we will add to total capital and reserves to get total capital and, and sorry and liabilities. I should say total capital and liability. And capital plus liabilities is equal to total assets. Assets equal to capital plus liabilities. And that's the end of the question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the May 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.